anyway, that's <laughs> that's a little bit of my journey on, on actually finding out my family's heritage. Um, it was very interesting, um, as I said. But also, it's something that I, I think my spirit already knew. I knew it in my heart. Um, but it was really neat to actually get that confirmation. And yeah, I forgave my ancestors for that, for not um, keeping keeping us from generation to generation aware of, of, of our heritage. Um, I can certainly understand what they may have been going through themselves um, just to survive, basically. Well, we're not the only uh, family that that's happened with. I mean, there's a lot of people uh, learning about their heritage. And God bless those of you that um, have never lost your heritage and hung on to to your Jewish roots and, and who you were. Because I'll tell you what, we're trying to catch up. Uh, so <laughs> that's actually been a journey for me. But I, I, I think back to um, some of the Bible verses with bringing in the scattered. Um, one of them is Ezekiel eleven seventeen. Therefore say... Thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries among which you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And that's just one verse. Um, and as we know, Israel uh, was reborn as a nation, thank God, praise the Lord, May 14th, 1948. And many uh, immediately um, were, were back in the, in the homeland, in the holy land. And since then, um, there are numerous, numerous people making Elia and, and going to the Holy Land uh, and to make that their home. So anyway, I wanted to touch base a little bit with you all and um, give you a little bit of a background and, and, and an understanding of why the Hebrew roots are so important to me. I mean, it is part of my heritage that actually um, I didn't always know. Of course, my family didn't always know, but um, I always had a pull towards it anyway and was studying it even before I had it confirmed. But overall, I do believe that the Hebrew roots are so important and so foundational to the Christian faith. I mean, let's face it, Jesus was Jewish. Jesus was not American. Jesus was not British. Jesus was not Chinese. And Jesus is not returning to any of those places either. He's returning to Jerusalem. He's returning to the Holy Land, to Israel. Jesus is Jewish. His mother was a young Jewish girl. And his father, of course, is, is of a father. Jesus did not get caught up with religion. Jesus was not happy with the Sadducees and the Pharisees of, of his day. And the, and the religion and the, the legalistic um, ways that they handled things. In fact, he would call them, call them out, call them hypocrites many times. Jesus was concerned with relationship. Um, so that is... That is also um, something that I wanted to bring up. And, and don't get caught up in, oh, well, um, this is Baptist. This is, this is Lutheranism. You know what? It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Um, are you following the Bible? Are you following what Jesus said? The, the early, what they would call the early Christians, they were not even called Christians back in Jesus' day. They were followers of Jesus is what they were called, or followers of the way, because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So it, it, it got coined as the way. There was The term Christian was first stated in the Bible in Acts 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch, and for an entire year, they met with the church and taught considerable numbers. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Prior to that, they were not known as Christians. Um, they were known as followers of Jesus. And Jesus was Jewish, as I said. And Jesus followed the Jewish customs and the, and the, and the ways um, and, the, and the feasts and the holidays. And he did not come to destroy the law. Um, he came to fulfill it. So he did follow the Hebrew roots because he was Jewish. So is it important to know um, Hebrew roots? I, I believe so. Uh, I definitely believe so because it, it helps you to understand uh, understand a lot more deeper than what you would have um, and what's being actually taught. Like my like Pastor Jay brought, brought up, there's, there's a lot of conflicting information that's being taught. In, in the Christian churches, unfortunately, they're not following the Bible the, the way they should. I'm not saying all, because there's a lot of good, 
good ministries out there that are actually reading from the Bible and they are they are teaching from the Bible and they are teaching the way they're supposed to be teaching. However, there are some that are not and um, that, well, we are also in the end times and we, we, we're also aware that that's, uh, that's going to happen. Um, there's false teachers, there's false prophets, there's false teachings, there's false doctrines and we need to really be aware of that. Um, and the way to be aware of that is to be Bereans ourselves and, and to actually fact check through the Bible. You know, we are so lucky in, in today's world, and well, I should say in America particularly and, you know, in the Western world, that we have the Bible and we can have it at our fingertips, whether it be Bible apps uh, online, whether it be the hard copy. And I would suggest that if you don't have a hard copy, Get yourself one because there may come a time that those Bible apps on the internet will be gone. And Bibles are hard to come by in, in, in many countries today. And you can best believe that, that it's not found on the internet at all. I mean, there, there are countries that are being persecuted uh, for their beliefs. Um, and so while there is, you know, while there is time to prepare, um, I would suggest getting getting a hard copy of the Bible and, and treasuring it because it is going to be treasure one day. And it may not be in our time. You never know. I mean, it could be the next generation that um, it, it is said in the Bible that there will be a famine for the word of God. Um, so prepare because it, it, like I said if it's not our generation it may be the next generation or the one after that um, that is looking and searching for truth and if you have that that's going to be it, it is going to be like having gold um, so again if you don't have a hard copy I would I would suggest getting one and that brings the next uh, topic to um, to discuss is what version of the Bible should I get I would say get the version of the Bible that you are most comfortable with reading, that you are learning from. Um, and there's so many different versions of the Bible. You can actually check them out on Bible Gateway. Um, most of them will be listed, like just punch out like a verse and just just click on to Bible Gateway because that usually always pops up. And on any particular verse that you're looking at, it'll show all the different versions. So you can get a feel for what you're comfortable with. Because what it'll show, it'll show that verse in King James. It'll show it in New King James. It'll show it at NIV, um, NASV. I mean, you can, you can kind of get a feel for it. Because, yes, there are all those different versions available. Now, uh, for me, I actually like to open almost all of those versions. But I'm, I'm, I'm studying out another degree in Christian ministry at the moment. So um, that is very valuable for me. But you don't have to go out and buy 15 different Bibles. Just find one that you're really comfortable with um, and take it from there. But as long as you have a hard copy, I really believe that that is so important and so valuable. And interestingly enough, the Bible is the top-selling book of all time. So <laughs> it, it is very valuable. <laughs> and as we move through these end days, um, it becomes even more valuable. Um, and it will be like gold one day uh, because there will be a, a famine for the Word of God. So here, particularly in America and the Western world, we're, we're in a time of plenty where, where the Word is, is available. And we can get a hold of Bibles, Bible apps, and all those things. But there will come a time when we are in the time of famine. So, like Joseph in the old in the Old Testament prepared, um, so we must also. And I'm not talking, you know, this is our spiritual food. So we are talking food. Um, so that is so very important. And also ask the Holy Spirit to to put that word into your heart to download it into you so it is part of you and start memorizing Bible verses as, as, as much as you can because the more of God's word that we have in, in us and part of us, you know, it's, it, it becomes part of who we are. And I realize I went down a complete rabbit hole here, but apparently, you know, this is something that is really important and the Holy Spirit has placed this on my heart to share with you as I'm, as I'm doing this 
this recording and if the Holy Spirit thinks that it's important to share with you, then I'm definitely going to share it with you. So getting back to the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith, Pastor Jay um, has mentioned in his live recording that I'm going to be bringing that as part of the ministry, as part of what I do, um, along with the Christian ministry as, as well. Um, and yes, that is very true. It's something that the Lord has placed on my heart to do. Um, and it's something that I really love um, to to study out myself and to also share with others. So yes, that is something that I'm going to actually be adding to our, our ministry when we plant that church. Um, and so I'll be looking for people, uh, music and um, music ministries and, and different things as we undergo this um, in the future. So that is something that is is slated for the future um, and very exciting because what, what we want to do as East Penn Valley Christian Center is to have that one new man in, in the same building and worshiping together um, as Jew, Jews and Gentile believers in Jesus, Yeshua, um, together in one body, uh, one body of Messiah together. And, and in the county that we're hoping to plant this church in, um, there is no Messianic worship at all. I've looked around. There had been in the past, but I don't know what happened. Um, and the nearest one that is to, to where I live is like 30 miles away. And the others are even longer. So this is going to be very ideal for, um, for Jewish believers in Yeshua, uh, for the Messianic congregation, to actually have a place that is close by um, for them to come and worship in a physical building that they don't have to get in their cars and drive 30, 30 plus miles. So, so that in itself is very exciting. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, so I'm going to end this. Um, I keep having to stop because my phone's ringing off the hook. And I apologize for it. There's a lot more clicks than what there should be because I am getting interrupted. So I'm going to stop for now. And until next time, y'all have a great day. And... Happy Sukkot and happy Columbus Day to everyone. And we'll be talking to, talking to you soon with another teaching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.